Hello, thanks very much for watching. Well, welcome to the beautiful historic city of Oxford. The city of Oxford is known throughout the world for its prestigious university. For over 800 years it's been home to royalty and scholars, and the city is filled with 38 colleges. The ancient architecture is in every direction, and the Oxford Canal terminates here. Long stretches of the canal south of Bridge 232 have been changed to designated conservation areas and Agenda 21 long-term mooring. I'd been told time and time again by other boaters not to travel down into the city. With very limited mooring available and a turning circle of only 52 foot, I wouldn't be able to turn around should I not find somewhere to stay or the river became unnavigable. At the end of the canal there's a lock that goes down onto the Thames with the name after the Egyptian goddess of light and magic rather than anything more recent. Just after Duke's Lock, you can either go straight ahead towards the city of Oxford, or as I did, turn right onto Duke's Cut. With precisely three turns of the ground paddle, Alice rose in the lock, ready to head out onto the short stretch where it joins the River Thames. I was about to enter a large river again, so both Molly and I had our life jackets on, and that anchor was chained up and ropes connected to the stern of Alice, just in case. To make my journey down the Thames easier to understand for you as a viewer, I headed west upstream. Having travelled down from Kidlington, just north of the city of Oxford, I turned onto Duke's Cut that bypasses the city and out onto the River Thames. I then drove to Lechlade on Thames, where I picked up my journey once again. Travelling down the river through open countryside, we passed the small villages of Buscot, Kelmscot and Radcot, and more for the night just east of Newbridge. This is Lechlade on Thames. And this is the very start of the navigable section of the River Thames. Now if you want to come this far up the river and turn around here in front of the mill, <laughs> you're in for a treat. I made three attempts to turn here with a shallow bank to the south, a low hanging willow tree to the west and the fast flow of water of the river passing to the north, let's just say I made a complete mess of it.
The locks along the river, even as high upstream as this, are large. Depending on the time of day, many are manned by lock keepers. You need a licence from the Environment Agency to travel on the Thames. And for a week, on my 60-foot narrowboat, it was £78.80. I was a bit nervous about being on the Thames, but to be honest, it was really exciting. And as the weather had been dry, the water was just calm and easy to navigate. Our first lock was St John's Lock, where a statue of Father Thames sat. It once marked the river's source north of Kemble in Gloucestershire, but moved here in 1974. The river was being used as training at Buscot Lock by Wiltshire Fire and Rescue. Most of the lockkeeper cottages are still manned by active lock keepers, something the Environment Agency is keen to continue. The dedication and commitment by the keeper to maintain both their lock and the surrounding area is clear to see. To the north of the river is Kelmscott Manor. Dating from around 1570, this limestone manor house was the country home of the writer, designer and socialist William Morris from 1871 until his death in 1896. The architecture and craftsmanship of the house gave Morris great inspiration for his work on the novel News From Nowhere and the manor appears in the background of Water Willow a portrait of his wife, Jane Morris, that was painted by Dante Gabriel Rossetti in 1871. There are moorings to the east of the manor, should you travel past either on a Wednesday or a Saturday during the summer and want to visit. At Radcott, the speed of the water increases as it squeezes through the bridge here. There's a popular pub here and lots of mooring. To the south, behind the boat's night flight and no more bets, is Radcott Bridge. This triple arched 13th century bridge is the oldest surviving on the Thames. I really wanted to moor up for the night at Shifford Lock, where there was even a small floating pontoon. But with rooks' nests all around, high up in the trees, 
there was a risk of zero sleep, so I carried on to a spot just past Newbridge. In the next episode, I carry on heading south on the River Thames towards Reading. Until next time, see you later. <laughs>